so what most people are doing is saying oh yes I would like to do that because that will make me happy and I would like to do that because that would make me happy and I would like to do that because that would make me happy and that would make me happy because it's lots of fun people and that would make me happy because it's got lots of money coming with it and that would make me happy because I'd get to live in a beautiful part of the world and we say conditional 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 what we want you to do is think about and this is what we want you to hear is what we've been after all day is that as you can find right here right now current something that feels happy when you think about it no matter where you're getting it from and you stay there until the conditions or the situations or the people or the ideas that match happy begin to occur to you you see what we're getting at it's it's flipping the whole thing it's doing it it's counterintuitive to what you've been practicing because what you've been practicing says I'll find the condition that I believe will make me happy and then I'll find a route to that condition that makes me happy and we say but you gotta understand that you're the point of attraction to which all things are flowing so if you can find something anything to think about or observe or live that makes you happy and you can maintain that for a little while other things that make you happy will flow into your experience and they will be in the form of the work that you want and the money you want and why is that because all of those components are in your vortex you didn't only just put happy in your vortex you put lots of money in there too you put lots of freedom you put the ability to be and do and have anything that you want you put the ability to make your own decisions you put the ability to set your own time you put the ability to set up your own calendar you put the ability to, to really be free you put the ability to make a difference in people's lives you put the ability to have other people that resonate with you flow to you that and more than we have time to talk about in your vortex and it's already all in there and what's the access key for you how do you spend that vibrational currency by trying to find some condition that you can make yourself believe that you can line up with or by just finding the core of the reason that you want all of those things and practice it as much as you can until you own it and then follow the inspiration to that desire which is to be happy that will we promise you fill in does that make sense to you so I'm a little blown away in okay. some in some cases it I was heavy yeah and you think you're blown away now <laughs> as the ideas flow and you feel the perfection of them and then you see the ease with which that's they what are, I'm seeking and then you and then you but in the seeking of it you're looking for something that is not and you introduce resistance into the equation how where, where did I do that by by saying I'm looking for this thing that I haven't found yet and so what we're really asking you is can you be happy do you have the ability to be happy before the idea flows yes because if you have the ability to be happy before the idea flows the idea will flow for sure do you have the ability to be happy before the money gets there because if you have the ability to be happy before the money gets there the money will get there before following so we know you want to say to us but Abraham it's easier to focus on the condition and we say how's that working out <laughs> it's not easier to focus on the condition conditions are loaded they're loaded with the way everybody else feels about them they're loaded with all your past beliefs about them conditions are loaded with expectations start in this pure place and create the environment that allows it to grow and then experience the explosion of good ideas flowing to you and say regularly oh, I had a desire and it was general but boy is it evolving into something that's more and more specific and the more specific a general desire that has no resistance becomes the more exhilarating it will be so a desire that has a lot of momentum and no resistance is ecstasy a desire that has a lot of momentum and a lot of resistance is miserable a desire that has not much momentum and no resistance is the beginning of every good thing you want <laughs> and, a, and a conditionally programmed world so you say they say what what are you looking for in life happy oh yeah yeah what else that's it <laughs> happy fun oh yeah happy and fun because fun makes me happy and happy is fun yeah fun and happy fun and happy and and fun and happy fun and happy fun and happy and clarity fun and happy and clarity because clarity makes me happy and clarity is fun fun and happy and clarity and power and power because fun is happy and happy is fun and clarity is power and oh, fun and happy 
and clarity and, and rich. <laughs> and rich. And, and rich. And healthy. In other words, once, once, once you're there in a stable way, you can add anything and everything else to the list and it will show itself to you in full measure. But you've got to start from the basics and you've got to give up the conditional approach to life that you have been practicing because the conditional approach is introducing resistance into your experience that is unnecessary. I'm going to have to download this. <laughs> Ah, our ploy is working. <laughs> I have one more thing that is completely separate, but how, how can I tap in to Abraham and this m message that comes through you? Get I, happy. I, Get happy. Yeah. I, I want it. Well, you're clearly on the trail of it. Your, your desire is clear and your allowing was strong enough to get you in the chair. And so there, the, in this moment, in this current moment, the resistance is non-existent. And so it's seeking this state of being, it's seeking this feeling. Really what it amounts to is not making such a big deal out of things and not trying so hard to justify and, not, and, and sort of taking everyone else out of the equation and just developing a relationship between you and your source and letting that be the primary thing that you're reaching for. And to understand that the source within you is happy and that when you feel happy that that alignment is happening. And when you're yearning for something, that's different. Yearning is different than happy. Yearning is act, an active vibration in opposition to what I'm reaching for. So it's not trying so hard. It's being easier about it. It's, it's looking for the evidence of it that's all around you all the time. It's acknowledging when you are in alignment and, and reveling in that alignment and, and talking about that alignment when you are there and keeping the, the momentum of that alignment going longer and consciously acknowledging that it is happening and, and staying there until you're fully appreciated and until you just feel obnoxiously invincible. In other words, the, when, when you tune into this and practice it and allow it and own it and and can get there easily and start there every morning and and get further and further into your day with it then all of the the easier it gets the easier it gets because at first is a little awkward but you get better and better at it and the better you get at it the more evidence it flows and the more evidence it flows the easier it is to be good at it until then it becomes the condition coming in response to the vibration rather than trying to get the vibration to come in response to the condition. That's really what we're wanting you to understand. It's getting the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart. You want to... And so of all of the things in the world that you can think of, if someone were to walk up to you and say, what do, what do you seek most in life? Your answer is... Joy, happy. And, and if you wanted to add more momentum to that, what other words would you say? If this person were saying to you, and what does that joyful happiness mean to you? Flesh it out a little. What other... What? Having fun, being passionate, uh, having, having a direction and going for it with having everything. Having fun, meaning engaging with lots of others. And, Laughter, and, and, humor. But feel how when you said having direction, there was a little yearning in that. Ah. Be, so, so what you want to say is n knowing direction, feeling my way, feeling the inspiration, getting the impulse, being alive to the impulse, following my, following my bliss. Feel, feeling it, being, being moved from the inside, um, recognizing that when I feel like this, I'm on the brink of something good. And then when that something good comes, saying, I knew you were coming. I just didn't know in what way you would manifest, but I felt you coming. Those kinds of things. Those are, these are the kind of conversations that you want to have with yourself. I knew you were coming. I could feel you coming. I woke up excited about you coming. Jerry and Esther were in this neighborhood a few years ago. And they were on their way to what they considered to be their favorite restaurant in the area and driving down the freeway. And all of a sudden, Jerry said, let's go to this restaurant instead. And Esther was driving and she, all of a sudden she needed to exit like now. And so she took the exit and then asked questions later, which was the agreement that they always had with one another. <laughs> all right, I've done it. Now why? 
I don't know. I just feel like we should go. I just feel like I'd like to eat here. But they have that great salad we like over there. And there's only five places in the whole world that we can get that salad. And, and, and I know, but I just feel like this is where we want to go. And so they went in, and the place was empty, which Esther never sees as a very good sign. And, <laughs> and hardly anybody around. And a very nice person came up and, and helped them. And... and uh, talked to them briefly and Jerry was always wanting to know people he wanted to know who she was and where she was from and just a little bit about her and and then Jerry reached into Esther's purse where there was the envelope where even though they beg you not to buy anything with cash you always do so there's always an envelope with a considered amount of money in it left at the end of the seminar and it was in Esther's purse and Jerry just reached for it and just handed it to the girl and said uh, this is for you and she said well thank you very much and she went into the kitchen and they literally heard dishes break <laughs> as the little girl had opened her package to see what was there and she came back in to the where they were and she said to them you know I woke up this morning and the first thought I had was something really, really good is going to happen to me today. Something really good is going to happen to me today. And Esther said, well, <laughs> <laughs> apparently Jerry was part of, part of that process because I wanted to go <laughs> over there and he wanted to come over here. And then she said, my roommate moved out this week unexpectedly and my rent is due tomorrow and I did not know how I was going to pay it. And Jerry said, if you had told us that story first, we wouldn't have given this to you. Because the more she tried to justify the gift that she had received, the more her energy became contradicted from the purity that it was when she had awakened that morning and said, something really good is going to come to me today, you see. And so you are in co-creative harmony with people all over the planet. And there are people who are ready for you and you are ready for them. And when you are deliberately readying yourself, doing it on purpose, and then you are wise enough to follow the feeling of that before you know it, you're just rendezvousing, rendezvousing, rendezvousing. Esther loves playing with her little kids, her little grandchildren, because they know something that most of the big people that Esther plays with have forgotten. They know that it's always supposed to be fun. Not just a little fun now, and then not fun, and then a little more fun, and then not fun. Always fun. Always fun, no matter what. Always fun. Fun, and then more fun, and then more fun, and then more fun, and then some more fun, and then more fun, and then more fun, and then some more fun, and then more fun, and then more fun. And sometimes it's fun to even think about the fun that we're going to have while we're having the fun that we're having right now. In other words, no point to ever get into a fun lag. There's no reason to ever get into a fun lag because they are young enough to still see that the universe will continue to deliver to them one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. But if you've been living some conditional life, then the universe is giving you this not fun and this a little more fun and this not fun and this not fun and this a little more fun. You're having a sort of jerky ride. It's supposed to be fun, clarity, fun, fulfillment, Fun, satisfaction, fun, interesting, fun, fun. Good feeling. Yeah. yeah. Good enough. Do you feel greedy when you think about only having fun? Good. Do you realize that clarity is alignment with source? Yes. Yes. Do you realize that fun is alignment with source? Yes. Alignment with source is a good thing, yes? 